Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to uh, my YouTube channel. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about my uh, model railroad automation. Uh, I'm going to focus on the hardware here. Uh, you should see my previous um, video to see uh, it in action. This one I'm going to go over kind of some of the technical details of the uh, implementation of the hardware. I'll follow this up with another one on the uh, software I'm currently using, although that's a, uh, a work in progress. Um, just to start with, so I'm going to do a little overview of how uh, Model Railroad DCC works, and then I'm going to go over into the, uh, the, com the computer I use, how I uh, get the power out to the sense circuit and uh, how I input. Um, and then I have a, uh, a box I use to aggregate multiple inputs to make it easier to instrument multiple parts of the system. And then I'll talk a little bit about the uh, block sense current circuit. Okay, to start with, I'll talk a little bit about the um, DCC system. Um, DCC stands for Digital Command Control. It's a uh, industry standard in the model railroad industry for uh, digitally controlling locomotives. And you basically put a microcontroller inside the locomotive and send signals to the through the track to tell the locomotive uh, whether to go forward, backward, uh, how fast, how slow, whether to uh, turn on headlights, and in some cases, uh, locomotives are equipped with sound systems. You can actually have them, uh, you know, sound the horn or whatever. So, um, just I use an NCE Powerhouse Pro uh, um, DCC system, and this is a diagram out of their uh, instruction manual. And it basically shows how you have a track. You connect the track to the Powerhouse Pro, and you connect a uh, fairly hefty 5-amp uh, power supply, 14 to 18 volts, into this Powerhouse Pro. And that connection is called the uh, booster. And that will take a signal, and you see the wire here, from the what's called the command station. And amplify it into a square wave that goes out on the test track. And this square wave signal is interpreted by microcontrollers that are mounted in the locomotives and the, the signal uh, contains a you know basically a binary code as to what um, what to do, whether you go stop, go forward, how fast, how slow, and like I said, uh, sound any horn or turn on or off any lights. So the basic DCC system is made up of a command station right here, which is right here in the Powerhouse Pro, and a booster, which is right here. And in the case of the Powerhouse Pro, the 5-amp version, it's all in one box, but it's really two different components. But... The command station is also connected to these things they call cabs. And they're basically handheld controllers, or uh, I don't have it, but they actually have wireless uh, handheld controllers that is used to send the commands over to the command station. So that's fundamentally how a basic... DCC system works no matter what the manufacturer like I said I use an NCE powerhouse pro but basically you have commands coming from these handheld cabs into into the command station the command station interprets these commands off what's called the cab bus and sends it over to the booster which boosts it to uh, 14 to 18 volts um, over to the track and a locomotive on the track will interpret these commands that are coming in as a uh, digital square wave from the uh, booster 
So that's kind of how DCC works. And that's kind of the fundamentals of the automation are this Powerhouse Pro has a serial input that allows me to um, send commands via a computer and it can send then send the commands over to the locomotive. So the, this fundamental aspect of my automation is a serial port on this Powerhouse Pro command station. Um, so let me uh, let me step to the next slide. I have a different representation of the same thing, not out of the NCE manual, but it also shows the RS-232 serial port, which you can attach to a computer or another microcontroller. Um, and it can talk to the, the DCC command station, which talks to the booster, and it basically uses a... Uh, two-wire interface over the booster and the booster is connected to the track with a two-wire interface um, and this sends basically a square wave uh, signal out, out to the locomotives which will be somewhere on this track presumably. I've shown up to now is just standard NCE uh, DCC system, a digital command control system but um, what I'm showing on this slide is what I've added the computer has a block sense system where on each section of track it has a, uh, a basically a little bit of hardware to detect whether there's a locomotive on this section of track drawing any current. And this particular example I have the track broken up into three sections and there's basically kind of in a block diagram format, basically a sense module on each of these three sections of track which connects back to the computer. So if there's any a locomotive on any one of these three sections, the computer will be able to monitor these three, well there's actually 16 ports here, but there's three ports that are connected. It can monitor these three ports and see where the locomotive is. Okay, so connecting uh, these two things, the, the previous slides together, I've got basically a computer over here that's connected and detecting where the locomotive is, and it's able to send using RS-232 serial port commands over to the command station to tell the locomotive what to do. So this is basically the feedback loop you need as the locomotive crosses these tracks it'll, the computer can be able to sense exactly where the locomotive is and send commands out to the command station which will send commands over to the locomotive through the booster to say go forward, stop, whatever. So kind of that's the complete system I've put together and that's kind of how you have to do it with DC. So this shows the uh, card installed in the Apple IIe and uh, I believe I got it in slot four. One, two, three, four. And you can see I've used two ribbon cables connected to um, a distribution box and the distribution boxes uses regular RJ11 uh, telephone connectors and cables to connect out to the current sense modules. And right now, in this current setup I'm showing, I only have three connected, but I could go up to 16. And this shows how I got the two ribbon cables connected to the two uh, connectors. Here is my, the computer I'm using is an, uh, an old Apple IIe, uh, but theoretically you can use any kind of um, computer, a microcontroller, a Atmel AVR, or a, you know, basically uh, any kind of computer, as long as you can get the data into the computer. So you need an interface to the current sense circuit, and you need an output to the RS-232 to the NCE Powerhouse Pro. Well, for the output for the NCE Powerhouse Pro serial port, I just got a standard Apple II serial card 
and plugged it in. It's called a Super Serial 2, but it really doesn't matter. Um, so the, the, the current sense input is this card, and this is something I had to build. And it basically sends power out to the current sense modules and accepts status in from up to 16 current sense modules. And this is all hand-wired. But this is what you'd have to replace if you want to use something else than an Apple IIe. You could use any kind of um, interface that could um, sense TTL level, which TTL level means basically zero volts or close to ground up to 0.8 volts means a low and over I think two and a half about two and a half volts to five volts is a high so you basically I have 16 inputs here and this particular card is connected just one input as a test circuit and I'm also generating a uh, 5 volt output that the current CES module uses to generate the input. Um, so that's um, something I'll talk about. Um, but basically, that's what all these resistors are. So I t basically take the 5 volt power supply, the Apple II, put it through this um, current limiting resistor, and then send it to the current sense module. And that provides that um, provides enough power to the current sense module that it can generate, you know, the two and a half, three volts needed to say, hey, there's something in this section of, or block of track, or zero volts if there's nothing. Um, but it also, because I put a current limiting resistor in here, it prevents like five volts of the computer's power supply from going all over the uh, model railroad so that I won't uh, cause a fire or anything if uh, something shorts that 5 volts to ground or something like that. So it's very current limited to about 20 milliamps, which is not much current. So it should be pretty safe. So what I'm doing here is I'm generating a 20 milliamp 5 volt output and I'm sensing an input that varies depending on how much current is going on on the DCC system. And that uh, input current is um, generated by another part aspect of the system, which I'll talk Here's about. Here's a schematic diagram of my input um, and power supply output. And you can basically see there's a header here, um, which uses 400, and it's basically this 470 ohm resistor is connected to eight power outputs on each of these connectors. So a total of 16 outputs. And if you follow this down, it's actually connected to the, uh, I believe, pin 26, which is five volt power supply on the Apple II. So the Apple II is actually supplying the power for all my current sense modules through these 470 ohm resistors, but at 5 volts with 470 ohms, you're, you're only going to generate about, you know, a little over 10 milliamps. So you're not going to, uh, so it's pretty safe to send that out. You're not going to damage the Apple II power supply if you short something out, out there. So um, that's why I did this. And then on the other side, these current sense modules provide inputs. And there's two connectors with eight, eight inputs on each connector, so up to 16 inputs on this card, which I showed on the last slide. And then there's four grounds per um, connector. So the grounds are shared among multiple inputs. I just did that for efficiency's sake. Um, hopefully not all the inputs are on all at the same time. But even if they are, they, these four ground pins should, uh, should be able to sp sp ground that uh, power plenty. Um, the chips here, so the Apple II bus is an 8-bit bus, and I'm providing 16 inputs. So these 74LS257s, there's two of them. 
are basically multiplexing the 16 inputs into an 8-bit bus. And when the Apple II is going to read the bus or this card to see what's going on on these input banks, it's going to use an address with the address bit 0 as 0 to read the first bank and the address bit zero as one to read the second bank. So he's got to read two different addresses to read two different reads to read all 16 bits. So because he can only read eight bits at a time on an Apple II. I could have added multiple more input banks and more, you know, instead of two to these LS257s or two to one multiplexers, I could have used four four to one multiplexers and had four input banks and up to 32 inputs but I think 16 should be enough for my railroad and I didn't want to put too much power because it is supplying power all these current sense modules and I think 16 is a good compromise and it should be sufficient for my railroad in that distribution box I basically have two of these boards and each board has eight RJ11s and one um, twin row, uh, two row uh, uh, header, which connects back to the card that's in the Apple II. There's no active logic on this board whatsoever. Um, I sometimes think it would have been nice to put an LED on this board to say whether it was sensing current or not, but I put that elsewhere. Um, it's just, just as well. But uh, so basically, this board is just distributing the eight outputs available from one cable from that card to eight RJ11s. And then I put two of these boards in that little enclosure I showed in the last slide. So I've got up to 16 inputs, and these are inputs only. Um, the power does go out to through the RJ11 to the sense thing so it's just powering the sense circuit which comes back as an input um, like I said I got four pins for ground shared among all these eight um, RJ11s and that was kind of a compromise I made to limit the number of pins on these boards so a very simple board so this slide shows one of my uh, DCC block detector uh, circuit boards. You can see the LED here, um, a uh, resistor, there's a transistor here, there's a diode here, and there's a capacitor here. And I experimented with the capacitor and also there's a ferrite core. And, th and the way this works is as I showed in one of the first slides, there are two wires going to the track, one to each track. Well, I take one of the wires to one of the tracks and I loop it through here. And you can loop it through multiple times. And the more you loop it through, the more sensitive the circuit gets. I found the best optimization for what I'm doing is I loop it through twice. And then it goes up. This is under the layout and then it goes up to the track. So this goes between the power supply and a section of track. And this doesn't go to the track, whole track, it just goes to a certain piece of track. And I found this capacitor, I, I believe I'm using a 10 microfarad capacitor here. This smooths out this circuit and, and basically keeps it from getting jittery and uh, I've the original design used a that I got off the internet used a you know like a 1.1 microfarad cap or something like that, and I've gone much to a much bigger cap. I experimented with a bunch of different caps, and I found for my purposes this 10 microfarad cap works best. And you can see the RJ11 connector that goes back to the distribution board. And then there's a diode. There's an LED that lights up whenever the current is being drawn. So what this thing is doing is as the current goes, th as the 
this is basically the supply rail to one of the rails. And then this black one's to the other rail from under the layout. This coil is conducting current if there's a locomotive on the track. If there's no locomotive on the track, there's no current conducting. If there's no current conducting, there's no current being transferred to the, through this ferrite coil to conduct current on the base of this transistor. So this side of the transistor stays high. This one is already connected to the ground, so it's going to always be low. So the input is going to be high because the high is here and the high here. There's really not much current or very little current throwing through the lead. The lead's not going to be lit. So that's kind of the state of the thing if there's no locomotive. If there's a locomotive over there and it's moving and it's drawing current, it's going to cause current to flow, and it's going to, this between this capacitor and this diode, it's going to cause the input to this transistor to go higher. And if it goes high enough, it'll, it'll cause um, the transistor to conduct. The transistor is an amplifier. So instead of the input being high, the transistor is going to short, well, it's not really short, but it's going to conduct the, the electricity flowing through this resistor. Instead of here, where it stays high, it's going to jump across to the ground, and it's going to lower the input to the computer. So the input's going to look low, and the computer can sense, oh, there's a locomotive on the track. Now, this whole thing is not like a digital signal where it's one or zero because the sense, the conduction of the locomotive on the track varies depending on the locomotive, what's going on. If you saw my last video, you could see the sense or the, the, the circuit changing, the LED, the intensity of the LED changing as that locomotive with the sound system um, powered the speaker. But, but it's basically measuring the current through here by, and changing the voltage here. So in the end, you get a, if, the locom if you've put the right number of loops of the track through here and you've got the right level of resistance and capacitance here, you're, go you're going to be able to tell when a locomotive is on the track. And in my sense, what I do is I set it up so that if I added more loops, it would actually sense just when the uh, DCC decoder that's built into the locomotive is drawing current. But I make it less sensitive than that, so it only senses when the locomotive is on the track and moving. So that's a summary of what's going on with my uh, DCC hardware system. I hope you understand that. Um, this last part is probably the most complicated of the whole system, but it uh, works pretty well. And if, if you decide to, to implement it on your railroad, you can play games with the uh, capacitance values here. I found this 10 microfarad works best for what I do or increase or decrease the number of loops through the uh, uh, ferrite, coil, uh, ferrite core you have here. Um, so that's what I've got here. I'm, I hope uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to you know ask it in the uh, comments section and uh, hopefully this was uh, useful and understandable. Thank you. Have a great day.